Welcome back. In this video, we're going to work on factoring perfect square trinomials. So let's recall our multiplication patterns. We know that the quantity a plus b squared, when multiplied out, gives us a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And the quantity a minus b squared, very similar pattern, gives us a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, recall we can't just square each. We need that, that middle or that linear term, that 2 times a times b, a times b. Since factoring is the reverse of multiplication, we know that 2 cubed, or 8, times 3 is 24. And by factor 24 to be 2 cubed times 3, or 8 times 3. So we take 24 and we divide we split it into its a product of its factors. Well, if factoring is the reverse of multiplication, then we can take our multiplication patterns and we can run them in reverse. Then a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, we've got a trinomial that fits that pattern, that will factor to a plus b quantity squared. And Likewise, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared will then factor to the quantity a minus b squared. Now, this only works, of course, when a and b, or a squared and b squared, are perfect squares. Okay, and then the linear term is twice the square root of a times b. Let's take a look at this in a little bit greater detail. It's going to be very helpful to know and recognize your perfect squares. Perfect square is the result of any mathematical expression raised to the second power. So thus a quantity squared and b quantity squared are going to be perfect squares because the square root of a squared and the square root of b squared is b. So even x plus y quantity squared and x minus 4 quantity squared and something like 3x minus 4 quantity squared, they are perfect squares because they're raised to the second power or they're raised even more so to an even exponent. Anything raised to an even exponent is a perfect square. You may want to write that in your notes. Anything raised to an even exponent is a perfect square. So we can take the square root of each of these and get x plus y, or the quantity x minus 4, or the quantity 3x minus 4y. We take the square root of each of those. So Easy perfect squares are numbers we can take the square root of and get an integer for an answer. You know many of the perfect squares, but I encourage you to memorize them. So let's start, let's take a look at our perfect squares. Well, 1 squared is 1. And going in the inverse operation, then the square root of 1, well, that also equals 1. Okay? 2 squared is 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. 3 squared is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, and so on. 4 squared is 16, the square root of 16 is 4, 5 squared is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. So our perfect squares then are all of these numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, these are numbers that are perfect squares. So continuing with that pattern, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 
12 squared is 144, 13 squared, 169, 14 squared, 196, 15 squared is 225. And then you'll also see numbers like 20 squared is 400, 25 squared, 625, and then of course if you can do 20 squared, you can do 30 squared, you can do 40 squared, of course, right, 20 squared is 400, 30 squared would be 9 times 10 squared, or 900, 40 squared, 1600, and so forth. So, your perfect squares are going to be the numbers circled in red. You're going to see these perfect squares, and you're going to have to take the square root of those numbers. Okay, so the square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 196 is 14. That you're going to need to follow that pattern. So, let's go back to our our patterns, make sure you have those down. So we have a squared. Well, we need to know the square root of a squared is a. And the square root of b squared is b. And it's got to have the 2ab, and that becomes a plus b squared. So have those patterns handy here, and we will do some sample problems. x squared plus 20x plus 100. We want to factor this. Well, this follows one of our patterns. Our coefficient on x squared is 1. It's a perfect square. 100 is also a perfect square. So the square root of 1 is 1. So we just have 1x. And the square root of 10 is, or of 100 is 10. And now is this 2 times a times b? Is that 2 times 10 times 1? And it is. So that factors to x plus 10 quantity squared. Second sample problem, 25x to the 4th minus 20x squared plus 4. Well, 25 is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. That's a times b times 2 is 20. But this is minus now, so this is going to work. It's going to be 5x squared, that's the square root of our quadratic term, minus, that minus sign will bring that down, minus 2 quantity squared. And if you're not sure, you can FOIL it back. We get 5x minus 2 times 5x minus 2, and if we FOIL all that back, we should get, oops, it's 5x squared, we should get 25x to the 4th minus 2 times 5, minus 10x squared, another minus 10x squared, so we have 2, negative 10x squared, so it gives us a negative 20x squared, and then a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. So that foils back, it checks out for us. Our third sample problem, 8x squared minus 40x plus 50. Well, this follows our first rule of factoring. There's a greatest common factor in here of 2. So we can factor out the 2. Remember, we don't divide out the 2. We factor it out, so that becomes 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. So 4 is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, so this looks like a perfect square trinomial. It smells like a perfect square trinomial. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 25 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10, times 2 is 20. So this does follow our pattern. 2x minus 5, quantity squared. Our third sample problem. 121 and 1 are both perfect squares. And 11 times 1 is 11 times 2 is 22. So that's going to follow our pattern. 11x minus 1 quantity squared. 
And our third sample problem, or our, pardon me, our fifth sample problem, 16x squared plus 48x plus 81. Well, the square root of 16x squared is 4x. The square root of 81 is 9. So perfect square at the beginning, perfect square on the end, so it looks like a perfect square trinomial. It smells like a perfect square trinomial. 4 times 9 is 36. Okay, so 4 times 9 is 36 times 2 is 72. Well, we have 48x here. This is not a perfect square trinomial. It might be factorable. I haven't tried, um, but it definitely doesn't follow our pattern for perfect square trinomials. So that's the introduction for perfect square trinomials, or I'll abbreviate that as PSTs, and we will see you in class.